Coming our way next, we have the world of medicine. Here, the host is Dr. Rajesh Nandan Mera of Chantilly Family Practice Center located in Chantilly, Virginia. Dr. Mera's guest is a renowned surgeon from the Nadari Center, Dr. Sharvin Nadari. Together, these two doctors are found engaged in a medical dialogue pertaining to the aging face. Let's join these two physicians. Good morning, this is Dr. Rajesh Mera from the Capital Forum bringing you the world of medicine. This is where we talk about new ideas, new inventions, new topics, and all the exciting things that are going in the huge world of medicine. The last few weeks, we've been talking about facial plastics, and I'm honored to have with me a very prominent, well-renowned facial plastic surgeon, not only of the Metro DC area, but all over the world. He has operated and has patients from England, France, Russia, and we're honored to have him in our studios Dr. Sherwin Nadiri. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thanks for yes, having sir. me back. Well, uh, we've covered a few topics over the last few weeks. It's we've talked fun. about, yes, yes, I'd love, we can just, you and I can just <laughs> sit here and do this all day, they're right? They're going to kick us out. Uh, they're going to kick us yeah. out after a few yeah. minutes, but we've talked about uh, rhinoplasties and fillers, and today we want to talk about the aging face. Right. Uh, you have such a baby face. <laughs> have you had plastics done? I've had a nose job. Oh, see, now that's not right. right. Uh, and I'm, you said your, your only, professor did it, right. meaning your the mentor. Right, my mentor, the person, Steve Perkins, who I trained, who trained with. And, you know, the fellowship program is the number one fellowship in the country, and he's world famous. He, he operates in Europe and elsewhere, and, you know, he does a fantastic job, and people can't believe that it's actually, a, you know, a, an operated nose, yeah. and we did talk about that. But, you know, the other part of facial plastics is the rest of the face. I mean, the yeah, nose Yeah, it's is, not just the nose, right. even though the nose is kind of the central point. As, as we all age, we obviously want to look younger, right. right? When we're younger, we want to look older, we grow a beard. I've had a beard all my life except the last 20 years. Now, when you get older, you want to look younger, so, and our faces get old. Right. So tell us about sort of the aging face. So I guess the, the most important thing is getting a few um, misconceptions out of the way. You know, people think about it's all gravity, gravity, gravity. Well, gravity is important. That's what's keeping us in these chairs, chairs right now. Yeah. But really, it's the first thing that happens is the loss of elasticity of the skin and the loss of volume. Those two things are important. Mm -hmm. Now, for decades, we didn't really have much choice when it came to elasticity or the volume, mm -hmm. but in the last 10 to 15 years, we actually have options of treating those. So the first thing that happens is you start losing elasticity of the skin, the skin gets a little bit looser, it stretches more. And the second thing is you're losing not only volume of your skin thickness, skin is getting thinner, muscle of the face is atrophying just like muscle everywhere else, mm -hmm. fat is getting less, you'll see basically people lose the fat in their cheeks and mm -hmm. they start getting hollowed. But even the bone, the jaw bone, the, the mid face, everything, the bone shrinks. So all this stuff that's basically shrunken in, now gravity sets in and just does the final, you know, puts the final punch in and pulls everything down. So in the old days, rejuvenating the aging face mm -hmm. was about a facelift and you'll see these people, I mean, the Burt Reynolds and you know, some of the celebrities with these really tight pulled faces. What surgeons would do is they would just pull, cut, pull, cut, and pull, and cut. Mm -hmm. And yes, you didn't have jowls, and maybe your neck was tighter, but you didn't look good. Mm -hmm. You didn't look younger. You just looked tighter. You knew something was wrong. Right. There, yeah. There's a person 70 right. who has a face over a, a 50-year-old. Right. Right. And that's just not, it, 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 it doesn't but, compute. But it looked hollow and tight. And what, what now we do is we replenish volume. And the volume can come in the form of fat injections from elsewhere. You can take fat from around the belly or thighs and put it into places that be belongs in. Mm -hmm. Or fillers. We talked about yeah, last, last week. Yes. Exactly. You know, Restyl and Juvederm, the liquid facelifts, which we'll talk about as, at some point. Basically replenishing volume mm -hmm. to the temples, around the eyes, around the jawline. You can actually make somebody look better without ever going through surgery. surgery. But if they're going to go through surgery, they still need the volume. And then the elasticity is the last part of the equation. And that can be improved with mm -hmm. topical compounds like Retin-A, which is important, or lasers and chemical peels and dermabrasions, things that basically take the surface of the skin, resurface Reshape it. Reshape it. Right. right. And then you establish some more collagen and some more of that elasticity. So you got to really look at it from multiple different Yeah, angles. I'm going to come back to those topics in a little bit, but sure. I also want to sort of touch on 
I call it uh, in vogue or sort of all these other, and I don't want to name all of them because there's so too many. many. There's there are so too many, many to right. name. They, I, I call them luncheon facelift, right? Right, right? The marketing ads say, during your lunch hour, come to us and we'll reshape your face. Right. What's your opinion about that and, and uh, how do you see that? You know, this is a topic that you and I can talk about for hours again because some of it is good. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most famous companies out there that markets more than anybody else out there is Lifestyle Lift. Mm -hmm. And it's a fine procedure. It's essentially, it's nothing new. Uh, it's basically a mini cheek lift. That's all it is. They, mm -hmm. they claim to have invented it, but it's been around for a hundred years and they just now basically Market it, right, okay. with a different name. However, it's good for certain people. Mm -hmm. If you have a thin person in their 40s and they're starting to form a little bit of jowls, doing this mini cheek lift is fantastic. But if you have somebody who's got heavy neck, obese, lots of uh, mm -hmm. adipose tissue, heavy jowls, a lifestyle lift isn't going to do it. Work. You need a much more extreme type of surgery. Right. So some of them are good. Some of them are, should be avoided feather lift or the thread lifts you may have heard mm -hmm, of. Mm -hmm. The thread lifts are procedures that really became well known or in vogue as you say a few years ago where doctors would take these barbed wires, mm. so it looks like a barbed wire, and they would put them through the skin, tunnel them down through the skin, grab the skin from underneath with these wires and pull it up. Well, complications can, can be mm. numerous. I mean, I saw patients that had facial nerve paralysis because these wires are not under guidance, they're blind. Mm. And you can rip through a nerve of the face and get paralysis of the face. That's the worst case scenario. It can actually stick out through the skin. That can be a bad mm -hmm. scenario as well. But at the best, this whole gimmicky procedure would give you results that lasted maybe three months, six mm. months to a year. A right. year later, you're back to normal. So uh, some of them you some should them be avoid and some are perfectly fine in the right patient population. Right. I think the take home message here, and I think you agree with that, is that in and of themselves, they may not be horrible things, but you've got to tailor it to the patient right. and right. look at all these other things. Right. Medicine is not a cookbook. That right. is, if I can share with you guys one thing, whether it's taking Tylenol or aspirin or uh, facial procedure that a good doctor is going to customize to your face, to your health, to your heart problem, the right medicine, the right procedure. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go back to, uh, so it's no more just like doing a facelift. That's kind of what I want to talk so about. Is there's like this whole constellation of things right, that right. one can do. So first of all, fa what is a facelift? I mean, people think uh, well, that's one of those terms that most people don't understand. And they think a facelift is essentially the entire face. Facelift truly is just something that addresses the neckline, mm -hmm. the jawline, the jowls, and the neck. That's what it is. If you need a sagging brow, that's a brow lift. If you've got extra eyelid skin, that's an eyelid lift. If you're or the mid fat face, under the right, eye, yeah. then you have a mid face lift. So there's a lot of different types mm -hmm. of lift, but a face lift truly just addresses the lower face. Now, even that surgery, if you just look at a face lift, almost no two surgeons do it exactly the same. The incisions are different. For example, you've seen incisions in front of the ears. They're visible. I don't like those. I've seen incisions in front of the hairline. Again, I don't like those. I've always liked to place incisions in hidden places inside they the ear. Up, right. right. I mean, you can have a very long incision, and afterwards, the only person who may be able to see it is probably your hairdresser. And even those situations, after mm -hmm. a few months when it's healed, even the hairdressers have a tough time seeing right. those. So the incisions are different than the plane that it's lifted. Going back to Burt Reynolds, poor guy used to be one of my favorite actors until mm -hmm. I can't look at him anymore. Right. The, the face, the type of lift that he's had is called the skin only lift, where only the skin is lifted mm, and pulled they just back. Pulled it so like it just a looks peeled. very right, it looks very Tight. fake. Right. Yeah. But the better face lifts are the composite lift where the muscles skin is lifted. And everything. Exactly. The muscles adjusted and the skin just casually drapes over everything. Now so. you mentioned lasers. Mm -hmm. Now we think of lasers as hair removals and tattoos removal. Uh, how do lasers work with the face? So a, a laser, all a laser is, is basically something that emits one wavelength of light. That's all it is for, for the people out there to understand. I mm -hmm. mean, a laser pointer is also a laser, but it doesn't make anybody younger. There's different types of lasers in facial plastic surgery. The strongest laser for resurfacing is the carbon dioxide laser, otherwise known as the CO2 laser. Now, traditionally, it was just one type of CO2 mm -hmm. laser, but now we have fractionated CO2 laser or a form of a fraxel that you mm -hmm. may have heard of. What that does is it targets water 
-hmm. as its molecule. Every, all these lasers go after some kind of a target, and CO2 laser goes after water. So it essentially is burning the skin, mm -hmm. but in a controlled way. When a plastic surgeon, facial plastic surgeon, a, a cosmetic dermatologist uses the CO2 laser, very precisely we're basically burning the skin, taking off the top layer, taking off the, the layers down to the area that we wanted to, the dead skin, the bad skin, even the precancerous skin mm -hmm. can go, and the new, healthy, tighter, more useful skin can replace it. Mm -hmm. Then there's erbium laser. Erbium is another type of mm -hmm. a resurfacing laser. It's not as deep as a CO2 laser, but that also helps with some of the pigmentation on the face. And there's other forms. There's pulse dye lasers, YAG lasers. So multiple lasers. Multiple lasers, and each one does something different. So when you go see somebody, just like surgery, just like anything else, you want to make sure they have all the options. If they, all they do is one thing, it's like a carpenter with a hammer. They don't have anything else. No. You have to be able to have various tools because each thing is going to be treated differently. And unfortunately, these lasers cost so much money, so some surgeons and some doctors buy these expensive lasers, can cost a hundred to $200,000, mm -hmm. and they just want to use that laser on everybody, everybody. and everything. And, and it's you, not the right indication. Right. right, exactly. Right indication for it, well said. Right. Well, again, it's been quite a learning experience. I'm sure that our audience benefited right. from that. Right. We'd love to have you back. Perhaps we will get your, you have an associate, right. I believe, that specializes in, in this aging face, aging face right. type thing. Right. So my uh, practice, we basically split it up. We're, we're Washington, D.C.'s truly most specialized practice. And actually, if you look around the entire country, the entire United States, mm -hmm. there's not a single practice that specializes the way we do. I focus purely in my office on injections and in surgery on rhinoplasty. I stopped doing facelifts, stopped doing brow lifts, mm -hmm. even though I've taught it. I was an associate professor at Indiana University teaching residents. Mm -hmm. I've written textbooks on revision facelift. I just stopped doing it. And Dr. Kulak, who's joined me, she is a facelift expert. She does facelifts and eyelid lifts, and she doesn't do rhinoplasty. So we basically split it up. Divide up and the And we work. truly are yeah. specialists, and, and it works very nicely. Well, I respect that, because this way you're going to be very good at what you do right. rather than sort of jack of all trades, right. even though certainly there's nothing wrong with right. that. Right. If you're comfortable doing it, I'm a family right. doctor. I do a little bit of everything, right. but uh, I'm not the expert uh, on much of anything. So thank you so much, and we'll Appreciate talk it. more in the future about some very other interesting topics regarding facial rejuvenation, aging face, and uh, facial plastic surgery. Thanks again. Thank you.